uh, we had a discussion last night about because uh, they announced the Slammies and one of the uh, categories is Match of the Year, and we were like, "What would be the Match of the Year?" And there were a lot of options because a lot of good wrestling's happened. Oh, uh, so, okay. Let's first start with like you two, of course, Amen, Amen, Man, Mike. I want you to at least reiterate a, a, a tiny bit in shortened version, not the half an hour we took after the wrap up last night. Uh, what do you think? Like, list some of the options. What do you think are are some surprising? You think uh, match of the year candidates that that you think should be in the mix? That we think will be or well should I, be. I, this is not what they what? select. We know how they oh, select okay. stuff. And yeah, I personally. mean WWE is gonna have it. WWE is going to have at least two rock matches in there. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't – they cross our dreams. Um, yeah. My personal match of the year, <clears throat> undoubtedly, in my opinion, and one that I definitely think deserves to be up in the list, uh, has to be um, the match from Payback between Dolph Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that match was probably WWE's best storytelling <laughs> performance in like five years i think that match was phenomenal i like i mentioned before i think wwe the way they handled the concussion stuff was great the way they build drama the way they handled the double turn without just you know del rio being like you people or whatever like he his actions in the match forced you know the crowd forced the crowd to turn forced the announcers to turn because they were looking at what they were seeing and they were like, this is not right. Even though Del Rio is the guy we're supposed to cheer and we're supposed to be behind. And Ziggler's supposed to be the heel. It worked out perfectly. And the action was great, but also the way they just used that the, you know, the, the whole concussion storyline, tying everything in. And I I really think that's a phenomenal match. Like some of the like the little stuff, like there's a part where um they go to the outside at one point, and Alberto Del Rio just shoves Biggie Langston for no reason. And then Biggie Langston shoves him back, and the referee ejects Biggie Langston. And Langston clearly says, like, I he shoved me first. Like, he shoved me first, and you're expecting me not to shove him. And Del Rio has a smile on his face because he realized what he just did. Because he's being a heel, not just because he's switching sides, but because of the actions that he's doing. Mm-hmm. I think that was a really phenomenal job of what they did, and I really hope they can even somewhat match it sometime going forward because the storytelling in that match was phenomenal in my opinion and made it match of the year for me. And I remember that discussion. It was like this was not a wrestling clinic. This was a story clinic. Absolutely. Yeah. With a lot of – I mean a lot of good like action-based stuff in it. Of course. Like the yeah, it got to a point where we, where we got concerned for Ziggler. Because Ziggler was getting just fucking beaten and and looked like he was just being destroyed, which was the point of it, and which is what made it so good. You know, it wasn't like we were having to like you know sort of fake this almost. Yeah, it was you know it was what was happening in front in front of us, and it was phenomenal. And the concern of AJ when she came out too really added to it, even though she was kind of a heel at the time. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everyone everyone in that match did their roles perfectly. So, yeah, that's my personal uh, pick for match of the year. What about you, Mike? You were in the mix of it with this last night. Uh, I don't know if I can decide on my match of the year. It might be the um, CM Punk Taker match, which, I mean, the build was amazing to it. The match itself yeah. was fantastic. It yeah. helps that I saw it live, obviously. Um, but I. I think a dark horse, a nice dark horse candidate would be Damian Sandow's cash-in match. Because that was a match that was unexpected. Um, Cena looked very vulnerable at times. And he also had to resort to a lot of new maneuvers. That was when he broke out his little half-Nelson bust, half-Nelson slam. And he broke out a few other things like that. And... It was a really, really good match. It went over two commercial breaks, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we were discussing mm. how many, how many raw matches and how many pay per view matches were going to be listed. Mm-hmm. Just because there's been a lot more better raw matches than there have been pay per view matches. Uh. <laughs> what the, LB, what, what, what is this reaction? I got one. Okay, Do you have to poop. <laughs> 
You gotta poop? You gotta go inside? I do. No, I poop inside like a person, but I I have a match. I'm very excited about this one, Sorg. Okay. Because normally with questions like this, it's just vague guessing, but I'm very proud of this one because I love it. In in all of 2013, thus far, there has only been one pay-per-view that I have sought out a replay of going so far as to own it after the fact. Uh, And that is uh, WWE SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. In that match housed – or in that pay-per-view housed one of the best matches I have seen all year, and it was the main event, and it was Daniel Bryan – versus John Cena. That match was fucking fantastic. It was so good that, in, at least in my opinion, it beat another amazing match on that card, which was CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar. That's right, a John Cena match better than a CM Punk match. In my opinion, this match really, really showed what John Cena can do. It showed that he can rise to the level of his opponent, and I honestly felt that it should have shut up anybody who was a john cena hater it of course didn't because this is the internet and it's full of people who have less brain cells than they have fingers but it was my pick for match of the year yeah i i I agree entirely i love that pay-per-view and i love that match because sort of like going off what lunchbox mentioned like john cena performed daniel bryan's style without it coming off as a cheap imitation Without mm-hmm. it be, seeming as if he's doing this to try to – like when he busts out that, that Cena kind of around before and he just does it because he knows the internet will lose their shit. You well, know, that, he, was that actually match. Just, he was actually just okay. wrestling a great match and showcasing that, hey, I actually can wrestle like and, and wrestle properly and wrestle well, you know. So like that, that – I love that match so much and Punk Lesnar as well. Those, both of those matches were amazing. That match also had a really good build. story point in it too, mm-hmm. because like the um, the segment before on the Raw when Daniel Bryan wouldn't chop or slap I forget which one it was slap uh, Cena in the face because that was what they did in Japan to show respect for them, and halfway through that match, Daniel Bryan just laid into Cena mm-hmm. like with a huge slap across the face and it, like. It's like Brian saying, okay, now you have my respect. Now let's fucking go. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's the little things that help a lot. Like it, 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 it's those little things that make a good match into a great match. Um, it's good stuff. Um, Sorg, did you name one? Do you have any, any ones that stick out to you? I've been trying. I've been really trying to break it down. I've been looking through some old pay-per-views and stuff, trying to – think something that's stuck out there the thing um, is that the, and like we mentioned like a, a lot of them like there were a lot of amazing raw matches. you know you know it, it, i i think something that doesn't get uh, it, and i know this won't these won't have a chance to win because it's not top end people but we've had so many good matches with tag teams lately um mm-hmm. the, the, these last few go arounds like you know just stuff the Shield being involved with stuff, and you know some pairing that involves Daniel Bryan. Uh, you guys actually brought up last night a really good point, um, which I think was the coming of age of of of, of uh, Antonio Cesaro. You know, yep. uh, the the th- the gauntlet match that started Dad with sword. Daniel Bryan and Cesaro. No. <laughs> wait, 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 I'm not done though. You can have that too, but I, I just wanted to. Uh, and went into Jack Swagger and was really even decent. With Jack Swagger and still had. Uh, 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 Ryback at the end, right? It was an entire like half an hour of Raw. Um, but then also, you know, a lot of props go to stuff happening in NXT, like this two out of three falls match with Sami Zayn and, and Antonio Cesaro. Um, there's good uh, wrestling. Cash is on to annoy Regal. Regal. NXT, like, yeah, Rigo yeah. and Cassius. Uh, the Hart. I'm really becoming impressed with the Harper and, and Daniel Bryan uh, matches lately, too. We're like, realize, mm-hmm. like, damn, Harper's a good big guy, you know? Um, why it, talent? Why is, it's impressive. I think anything this year has done it showcased that there are tons of talented mm-hmm. people, and that's why. In and that this company is right now. This is a whole. Do we get into? Yeah, we will. This this is another discussion. Why? That's why I go on to like this NXT thing is working, and this idea of and I'll just plant the seed, and I hope to have a greater greater discussion on this. I don't want to get into this now, but this idea of what if what if. NXT is an expansion has an expansion and WWE has like an indie level 
play field in a regional setup, and that feeds into WWE and it gives us better talent, like we're already seeing from yeah. this version of NXT. But again, I don't want to get I into think, that discussion. And, but I also think like like the biggest thing I think I think the reason for this is something that NXT is I think doing. They're developing great wrestlers. They're developing great storytellers. They're developing great actors. Mm -hmm. They're developing people that are you know encompassing a lot of the skills. To where, and it's not even the indie guys. Like I know people think that you know, oh, you obviously if you bring up Luke Harper and Sami Zayn and all those guys, they're going to put on amazing matches because they're amazing wrestlers. But even like take last night, Daniel Bryan against Eric Rowan. Who thought Eric Rowan could bust out a really great match? Yeah, and he did it against Daniel Bryan. Like there are tons of talented people down there, and I think. Uh, and the, even the amount of people that they are going to hopefully bring up soon, like that talent pool is very stacked. And it, it that's the one thing that disappoints me when you when you have people like Wade Barrett doing the Bad News Barrett stuff where he's – or say The Miz or Kofi Kingston who are good and they're, they're somewhat established but they're also just there. And then you have so many people that are willing to just break out and who are willing to just do new things and be creative and just go all out with it. Like it it really differentiates the two. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're seeing. I think that's what we're going to see more of next year. Just to start. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Bobby, do you have anything? I guess um, I you took stole it. mine. I'm sorry. Well, you, you can expand on that. That's fine. Um, I was just going to say they probably won't pick that match since it was like a gauntlet match. Um, but that segment within that gauntlet match was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, another one that nobody else said about um, that was a pretty decent match was I think because of the surprise. We didn't know if this person was going to win or not. Um, Mark Henry versus John Cena was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, again, I think build was better than mm -hmm. match in than that case, match. for for sure. But yeah, it, but we didn't know going yeah, into so it. We didn't. We weren't sure for, who was going to win. It was the storyline. So. Double cross of the year. I'm sorry, what's and, that? Mark. I'm sorry. What? Uh, there's an award this year for double cross of the year. That's and if win. Mark Henry does not <laughs> win that. Yeah, that is Mark such Henry a shame. Mm -hmm. That second well, on Raw was so. I, good. I looked on. I looked on WWE.com. And it looks like the app is going to determine who wins each slammy. I don't believe it. But voting on the app or just like – well, The, 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 app, is, the, the app, app is going to become sentient and pick every winner. Yes. 